Merci, guys. Hey, you guys, what's up? It's your sketching pal, Becky. And we are here just to soak in the sun because the weather in Hong Kong is finally turning somewhat bearable. It's a nice 23, 24 degrees Celsius with some warm sunlight coming through. And I happen to be having dinner um, at my friend's place that's just near this area. And this area has a pier. So guess where we're going. So Hong Kong's beautiful pier side didn't used to always be this way. This is reclaimed land and I believe it is still an ongoing project by the government. So this is Kennedy Town. Essentially, it's the most west side of Hong Kong Island and it goes all the way, all the way to the east. And basically, the whole pier side connects because the government just reclaimed a little bit of more land recently um, towards the other island side. I think the goal is to be able to walk from here all the way to the edge of the other island. Um, there's currently like some spots in the middle where you kind of have to detour in road a little bit but mostly you can just walk straight ahead so it's one thing that i really like about hong kong is they made the city like really insanely walkable and not just within the city itself but also to appreciate the mix of the buildings and the nature and i just thought that it's it's such a brilliant concept such a brilliant place um such a brilliant way to shape a city to make it not just a great place to work but also to live So one of my favorite pastimes is actually to go to the pier side or go to the park and just kind of enjoy the scenery and the mix of the loud noises of the street as well as the nice sounds of nature. And it's always nice to just kind of sit and enjoy the time a little bit. But at the same time, to sketch and get that etched into my sketchbook and also my memory, um, I don't think I'm going to live in the city forever. And but at the same time, I really like the city, so I thought, you know, while I'm here, not that I have a date of departure, um, but, you know, while I'm here, I thought I would just make the most out of it and make a lot of memories and to document it right here. So I have this memory kind of forever. Oh, got a little bit sentimental there. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Honestly, I'm still kind of figuring out what to sketch because there's just so many things like, do I sketch the skyline? Do I sketch the sky? Do I sketch these like long, beautiful shadows? Or do I just do all three at once? Probably not a great idea. I will decide. You know, sometimes if you wait long enough to figure out what to sketch, the answer just kind of presents itself to you. So I was waiting for, um, I was setting up my sketchbook, setting up my cameras, and then I was gonna sketch some people on the bench and then they left at least in the nearest benches near me. So um, I guess that's my answer, right? Either I sketch an empty bench or I sketch the skyline. Um, but it's kind of interesting how things always change and you always just have to be flexible to what's um, in front of you and what you decide to sketch as a result. One thing about sunsets, as um, I've mentioned in like previous videos, is that the lighting changes really fast. So what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to sketch as quickly as possible to capture the light without having it change and I don't think I did it greatly but I think I did capture kind of like the essence of it or like the cliff notes of it if you will with the sketch and I'm testing out also using my camera in a more normal speed instead of a time warp because I think that there is kind of value for watching people sketch in real time or at least like I find value in it so I try to maybe alternate between time lapsing it and also sketching in real time especially because the sketches quite fast like I, you will see that I do everything in under 10 minutes so the first thing I did was I spritzed the page and that is because I wanted the colors to kind of bleed into one another and I also wanted the colors to be really soft because that's what I see from across the harbor here and I'm coloring in the sky as well as the water because those colors always tend to be similar because waters are always a reflection of the sky so it's always just a different shade, but they tend to be the same kind of tone and hue. And one of the fun things about watercolor is if the page is wet and your uh, patch of paper is kind of wet, when you fill in another color, it just tends to bleed softly into one another. And it's one of my favorite things about watercolor. 
So next I am inserting the mountains in. I know that the edge of the sky that are nearing the mountains are a little bit more yellow, but I didn't want to put that in first because I know that the page is still wet and I didn't want the yellow to bleed into the blue and make a green sky. Um, I need to figure out what the science is behind that, but isn't it kind of weird that there's always yellow and blue sky colors but never green? Because green is like ominous or something, um, but that's what it is. So I just wanted to be conscious of it and put it in separately. So now I'm just putting in different shades of the mountain and slowly coloring it in as I'm waiting for the layers to dry. After feeling like the page is dry enough-ish for me to put in the yellows, I'm going to insert the yellow in here because I feel like if the yellow bleeds into the mountains, that's totally fine. It just can't bleed into the blue sky. And I'm trying to make it really faint as well. I think getting like a faint yellow is really hard because you don't want the yellow to be too cool or too warm or I don't know, just like color matching yellow is so hard and I think I need to observe the sky a little bit more to figure out what exactly the shade is. And moving on, I'm just going to insert like the buildings that I see in the distance as well as the bridge that I will insert later. But because the page is so wet, so I'm just really conscious about dropping in some color and then letting it bleed off to the side a little bit. Which is alright because it makes for really soft edges and like a really nice background. And you can see that there's no hard edges in this sketch at all. Everything is just like literally a blur. Um, I guess I can say like maybe this is a scene that you view when you wear glasses. And that will work because I guess art is all about how you kind of present the story around it as well, right? Um, I did see some cranes that were there in bright red, so I wanted to make sure to add that. And conveniently, they're actually right in the middle of the sketch. Time jumping a little bit because my camera died and I didn't notice. I just added the two big bridge um, vertical structures and also drawing the horizontal one. Um, trying to add in some lines as well in between there just to show where the bridges are held up, like the pillars where they held up the bridge. I also added in some ships. And one thing I want to try and add is a little bit of dimension. So I tried to add in the shadows of the ship just to make sure that they kind of have like a 3D profile as opposed to just having a 2D profile, just sitting on the page doing their own thing. And when you look at the background, you can see that the lines are so blurry and so faded and I think this is the magical thing about watercolor is that if you start from back to front and you wet the whole page, the lines are soft and then as you progress, it gets sharper and sharper. Time to do something I've never done before is actually add a fountain pen ink after the sketch is being done because usually I do it before. And here I'm just trying to outline some shapes, add in a little bit more black into areas where I feel like the shadow is. Nothing too detailed because I also don't want to kind of lose the soft sketchy vibes of the watercolor. And because my watercolor isn't 100% dry, actually the fountain pen ink does bleed a little bit even though the ink is waterproof. But I don't think it matters that much because I think it just adds a little bit more sharpness to the sketch. And it blends in a little bit more because it will be kind of weird if the pens are all... I mean, nothing wrong with that, but I just thought it would be weird if the pen is all sharp and doesn't really blend into the background. But now while I'm sketching while it's so wet, I can get a little bit of both worlds. And after a few more details, we're done. Less than 10 minutes, y'all. That is the beauty of 
quick watercolor sketching. honestly quite happy with the boat sketch and kind of was packing up or getting ready to pack up but then I looked to my left and I saw a bunch of people just chilling out here and it seems to me that they are fishing and it's not um, an uncommon sight it is quite common that you see people around Hong Kong just casually fishing by the pier but I thought you know what since I'm there and they seem to be really casual about fishing or they're just staying there for quite some time I thought that I would also draw that in so I believe this is also the last page of my sketchbook so I just thought like you know what if I finish the drawing now then I can kind of store the sketchbook and I can start a new one right after and I chose to draw this guy that was closest to me um, I contemplated whether or not I should color it in mainly because the lighting is really beautiful behind him but I also thought that maybe I could capture it better in a photograph or even in the video that you saw a little bit earlier before this clip so I just chose to draw him instead I mean I can always add in color later anyway but I will just do this step first and make the decision on coloring it in later so I am just drawing the basic form of the guy sketching and as always, I start from the face because I believe that that is the most important part of a figure or at least that's where your eyes are drawn to naturally the most. I believe that's probably human instinct that uh, prompts us to do that. And then I thought I would draw in the fishing rod and just continue on with the other shapes. Um, really simple, nothing too complicated. I don't think I even sketched in the background because I really just wanted to focus on this guy right here. And... You can see that this whole drawing process will take less than three and a half minutes or maybe just just about that much so uh, sketching really doesn't take a lot of time there's a lot of observing and it definitely felt longer than three and a half minutes because i kept looking at him and nervously thinking like oh my god is he gonna move like is he just gonna set the fishing rod down and go sit somewhere else um but he did kind of stay there for the most part so i am thankful for that and I am thankful for this moment.
about to set now, so I'm just gonna tuck in my sketchbook away in my bag and I'm gonna pull out my camera, which is you, my trusty phone, and I'm gonna snap a few pictures. Thank you so much again for joining me on this wonderful day. I'll catch you in the next one and happy sketching. Bye.